Okay, I'm going to test out my Greenstone install by clicking Start for the Programs. Get this Windows. And go to Greenstone and run the Librarian Interface, or GLI. This is a Java program that will uh, provide us with a application to design and create digital collections. These collections are going to be local on our machine. They're going to be in our users uh, folder under Greenstone and Collect. And we can see them there in a web browser. Typically in a library, we'd be designing collections and they'd be on a web server so they'd be over the internet. And this will look and operate exactly the same without having to worry about the web server. Um, there's a demo collection we can use. So for example, if I had already opened it to check it, so it was there. So I did file open. You see there's a Greenstone demo collection. You want to open that because this will allow us to make sure everything's working. Here's our collection. We can see there's a bunch of folders with stuff in them. If we click on create and preview, we can take a look at the collection. Now, we don't have to worry about what was done for it. We'll go over how to build collections later. The preview is, takes place in the web browser because the collection is on a web server. Uh, it loads into your default web browser. In this case, it's uh, Firefox. So we could uh, copy this URL and paste it into Chrome, for example, and uh, tab here paste it in, and we can take a look at it on Chrome. There it is. It looks the same. It should look the same in any web browser. Now, this may not look like much, but it does have access points for titles or indexes. You can call them titles, subjects, organizations, and a how-to. We can also search. There's a full search engine. So if you want to know something about snails, and I'm sure you do, we can see how to farm snails. There we are. We'll how to build a pen, how to put the snails in, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so this is a collection. Now it doesn't look like much. You say, well, that's a pretty weak looking thing. But because this demo is designed just to show you the functions not to look good, what can you do with Greenstone to make things uh, more interesting collections? Let's take a look at that. Okay, what I did was copy over some uh, digital collections from previous terms. So let's open them up. load in the collection, and then we're going to display it once it loads. These are all projects that have been done. Uh, you see the source files are just plain text ones, actually, here. Uh, and we create and preview. I'm going to rebuild the indexes. And what we see is a stage play. So if you want to put on a play, here's a digital library of plays. So perhaps you would like to search for a play or decide on an audience, maybe uh, adults, or type of theater, uh, or maybe a genre you'd like, a comedy, a drama, a musical. I feel like a musical. Dinosaur Rock. That sounds good. <laughs> and we can see there's all about the play. You get all the information about it, and you can actually uh, download a copy of the play and put it on. So uh, anyone interested in doing a play, this would be uh, a digital collection that would be useful for that. So let's go back and do another one. So let's uh, open up. Uh, oh, Stephanie's Bird's Watch. Let's say you're a birder, and you want to know where to go birding and what they are. So her source files are photos, pictures, images of birds. So let's take a look and preview it. Again, we're not going to go in yet how this was done. We'll see a little bit later how uh, this stuff was created uh, each week. So hmm, interesting, the map's not moving. It's a Google map, embedded Google map. And I'll be a bit slow right now. So you can search, you can browse birds, you can what features they like from a location. So, for example, you might decide you want to go to Leamington, obviously a bird place, and Point Keeley, you want to go, maybe the barn swamp. Oh, hummingbird, let's get a hummingbird. So you can decide to look at hummingbird. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that, that's the sound of a hummingbird. <laughs> well, this tells you everything you need to know about the bird, and you can go off and do your bird watching. So. Uh, the users here are birders who want to know where they can find birds in southwestern Ontario. Why not? Let's go back and try another one. Let's open up. Uh, oh, salsa dancers. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. You know, the mood for dancing uh, or practicing. We can see here the 
source file, the digital files are MP3 audio files. So let's create and create this. So you notice that these collections don't look anything much like the demo one, well, because you can modify anything you want. So what would you like? Tempo? Yeah. You have a particular artist you like? Let's go by tempo. Uh, slow. Let's have a slow dance. Yeah. So this is, okay, you can see it's slow, last four minutes, here's it from these albums. Maybe I should turn that down. <laughs> but, uh, hey, this, everything you need to do practicing salsa music, uh, this would be the collection for you. Okay, and again, that was, uh, we've had a plain text one, we've had one with images, and one with audio, MP3 files. Let's open up another one. More music. I think that's also. Uh, yeah, those are all MP3s. There. You know, so it's organized by bands as well. Uh, if we do create and preview. We can see uh, this is all. Oh yeah. So the genre is not much of the genre. You got your punk. You got your screamo. Various ones like that. Here's the band. We can see this is their album. We drill down. And here's the songs and the album. So if you want to take a look at the record for when the album came out, here's everything with the band, we can like to listen to it, I don't think we have to, so we'll move on. Let's try, what else we got here? Roller Derby, yeah, everyone loves Roller Derby. Um, so, this is, I'm not sure what the users of this one are, um, but it will probably tell us, yeah. Okay, this is for 57 documents, it's probably for people into Roller Derby, resources for Roller Derby, this is various, um, Indexes, authors, titles, browsed by subjects, stuff like that. Yeah. So if you're a roller derby enthusiast, that would be the one for you. Uh, let's go back and try another one. Maybe I can't remember what the document types there. Probably uh, HTML files. Oh, PlayStation Gamers Advisory. Okay, let's load up this one. This is Sarah's. Uh, and, you know, she's got HTML files and associated images with it. So let's see what she's come up with for our PlayStation 3 people. I guess it would be PlayStation 4. Oh, it's a gamer advisory. So that would be, what's it called, librarianship? It's called Peter's Advisory, right? You want to know, hey, I'm looking for a game, so by title, genre, or by rating, yes. I want something that's mindless violence. Uh, oh, that's rating of how good they are. Where's the ESRP? Is that the one? Yes, sure, I want something. <laughs> Ah, God of War, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So if we're going to game, we want to, here's a full summary of the game. Tell us all about it. There may be trailers in there, videos and all the other sort of stuff. So now we know what we can do with our spare time. Uh, let's open up another one. What else we got? Oh, cemeteries. There we go. Let's do this one first. I'll do the, this is maps, actually. These are historic maps. They're in image format. And what, uh, Jennifer has done is take the old maps, historical maps that are in the collection of Western libraries, and just layer them on to current Google Maps. So, for example, if we're looking at a map in the gallery, you know, it's the Great Lakes here, let's say, and we do the catalog record, and it will layer on, here's the old map, and it's not the Google Maps. So we're using the Google Maps API here to produce our own custom shape line. So then we can see that this fits here. And we could then compare the changes over time with the two maps. So kind of interesting. You can do stuff with maps. Uh, and the last one I'm going to show you uh, is cemeteries. Yeah. So if you're interested in dead people. Uh, actually, this is a, a very interesting idea because, for example, the Clinks uh, family. So um, public libraries typically have a lot of genealogists come in. And so cemetery records are key sources of data. So let's take a look at what they've done here. And the trouble with cemeteries is that the, uh, let's pick a cemetery name. Well, I want to go by people. Maybe. Let's go find the Clinks. There they are. Paul Clink, there he is. Uh, what we have is the inscriptions from the cemetery. And these things are fading away with time. Right? So the acid rain makes them go away. So it's handy to know this. And we you know where it is. She's got a picture. There's a, uh, this is live, uh, so there's a Google map, live Google map. We can find our way to it. And there's a street view in there where we can see where it is. Right? So this would be useful for uh, anyone looking up uh, records of people uh, from the past. So 
a very interesting idea for public libraries. Now, one of the things I've said is that greenstone is a little difficult to use, uh, and it is. It is very uh, going to be frustrating for you. The software you're used to develop things is a little old. It works fine, and it supports a lot of uh, library technologies that you won't see elsewhere, such as OAI and Z3950, but it's difficult to use. So the question is, is there another way to produce digital libraries? Yes, yes, there is. Now, the software that is similar to Greenstone in that it's dynamic, that you can has a database and uses the Apache web server. It's called Omeka. This has been around for a while. It's starting to get actually better. We now see uh, people working on things like Mark Record plugins that it didn't have before and other sorts of parts that you could use. So we see uh, it runs on a server, so you'd need a web server. Uh, once you have one, you can put things on the internet uh, that are digital collections and archives. Right? Now this is... Oops, JavaScript turned off for safety and they allow this website. So it allows you to create uh, big, uh, create all sorts of digital collections. Now, the problem with this again is the web server thing. If you don't have a LAMP server, you can't really run it. So for this course, it's not possible because Finns doesn't have one. I'd like to move to this at some point, possibly next year. But if you're looking at something for producing digital collections, you can sign up with these people. Um, you can purchase a uh, subscription so that you can mount your websites on here, your collections on here, right? And it allows you to, yes, yeah, take JavaScript. It allows you to create things that are online using um, technologies that are a little, I won't say easier to use or more modern, but technologies that may be more familiar. It's still HTML and CSS and JavaScript and bottom, but uh, it may be something that's a little easier for people to do because the server can be on the internet and you just have to purchase uh, basically a subscription with it. So this is something to keep track of, but their new version 3 coming out will probably be very good. Uh, I think uh, in the past this software didn't have a lot to it. It didn't support library technologies such as Open Archives Initiative. And Z3950 and other things, but it's getting there. So this is something to keep in mind when you're doing digital libraries. Now that's a quick introduction to getting installed, what's going on. Uh, oh, I have to do the math. I've got to add the Mac stuff uh, now.